All right, short but important video today. It's no secret that I like Astro a lot, and when I post about it, I've been hearing tons of love about the framework, and rightly so. It's a great static first framework with lots of DX bells and whistles. Today, we're going to do something simple, but powerful with Astro, and it's gonna unlock everything that you really need to do for most websites using Astro. We're going to add dynamic routes uh, from a GraphQL API, or really from any API, but GraphQL is the topic of the day. Dynamic routes are important whether you're using a database, a CMS, or any API. They let us build pages from data that's outside of the markdown flow of Astro. So let's go ahead and dive into the code and get working. All right, so first things first, we have a default Astro project set up. I got this up and running uh, doing NPX create Astro app, and then I just chose the basics build from there. Uh, from this, we need to create the route that we need. So inside of my source directory, which is automatically populated by Astro when I run that command, I'm gonna add a new file. We're gonna create a route that's at the slash pages route. And then when we do a dynamic route, we're gonna put things in square brackets. This is going to be a parameter that we can take and populate in our code. Uh, if you're familiar with how uh, Next.js prior to 13 uh, ran or some other uh, frameworks, they all typically use this as their dynamic parameter setting. And then we're gonna call this a .astro file. You could use JSX if you wanted to install a, a, a React in here, but Astro is perfectly fine for me. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is actually define our static paths. We're gonna do all this statically. We're not gonna use any of the nice hybrid or, uh, or server rendered pieces of Astro today. Uh, so to do that, we're going to need to export a get static paths function, much like older uh, Next would have done for us as well. And to do that, instead of defining it in more of a traditional JavaScript fashion, we're gonna actually set it in between uh, two gates, two sets of triple dashes as front matter. Uh, which front matter is JavaScript that's gonna execute in our build process for Astro. In this case, we can run any JavaScript, including async stuff. So we're gonna export this as const get static paths. And then that's going to take uh, equal a function. We're gonna make this an async function because we're gonna be fetching data. And that is going to be just a simple arrow function. You could use the function keyword and whatever else you need there. All right, and next up, we're actually going to need a couple external pieces here uh, to do GraphQL in probably the easiest and smallest way. We're going to add a dependency called GraphQL dash request. So npm install GraphQL request, and also the API that we're going to end up using here, the GraphQL API. I'm going to source from HiGraph because, well. I work at HiGraph and it's an easy GraphQL API that I can use. If you want to uh, to use the exact same API, I'll actually provide a link down to a clonable project that you can use that has the data ready for you. But you can see here, I already have inside of a .env file, inside of my Astro project, I have a HiGraph endpoint and here is that endpoint in its entirety. This is what we're gonna be using to make the requests. All right, you can see here that we have finished our installation. So now we need to add this to the, um, to the project. So first and foremost, we're gonna to need to import this at the top. So we're gonna run import, and I'm going to grab the GraphQL client from the, uh, from the package we just installed. So in this case, it's going to be the GraphQL dash request package. So we want the GraphQL client from that. And then inside of our static pro, uh, paths, we're going to set a new GraphQL client up. So we'll say const client equals, and we're gonna use the new keyword and the GraphQL client that we got off of the package. This is gonna be a function, and inside the function, it's just going to take the endpoint, the GraphQL endpoint that we need. In this case, it's from our env file, so it's gonna be from import.meta.env, and that's where all of our environment variables are. And this is gonna be for high graph underscore end point. Again, whatever you want to name that is perfectly fine by me. So once we had this installed, uh, we can actually build the request that we're going to need here. I'm going to set up a GraphQL request string. So I'm gonna call this, oops, we're gonna call this the pages query, and it's going to be a template literal string, and it's just gonna be a GraphQL query. If you're not familiar with GraphQL, it's a nice way of uh, 
splitting up our requests in meaningful ways that's a little bit easier to deal with than REST. So we've got a query, I'm calling it my query. It's gonna be a pages query, and this is what's set up inside of HiGraph. I have all of my pages listed, and each one of them has specific data. There's just a shorthand to get that data. And then I have a slug on each of these. I have a title and I have a body and that body has some HTML on it. I usually prefer people using the raw JSON, but that's kind of outside of the scope of this tutorial. Then we close all of our, all of our lovely things here and we are ready to actually fire the request and get the response from HiGraph and start working with that data. So I'm gonna set up a new variable, const pages, and we are going to await, since we're in an asynchronous function, the client, which we set up up above, and there's a method on that called the request method. And for the most part, when you're making simple query uh, requests like this, you can just pass it the query string that we wanna make. So in this case, I have a pages query uh, that I'm gonna pass into that request, and it's gonna handle all of my fetch for me. All of this is handled inside that, as well as destructuring the data a little bit to make things a little bit easier in the future. And then what we're going to do is return out of this function, return out of this get static paths function, an array of our pages structured in a very particular way. So we're going to return out of the function. We have the pages that we're getting back as the response. And inside of that, I just happen to know that there is a pages array. We need to map over that and we're going to set a variable here as page for our uh, arrow function here. And the arrow function, instead of returning the entire function, what we're gonna do is we're gonna return just an object. So I'm gonna put this inside parentheses so that I can just immediately go into a, into a return uh, for an object here. <clears throat> and the object needs to have a params property and that property is going to be an array. And that array needs to have a matching variable to the dynamic route uh, variable in the square brackets there. So I need a slug and I need to match the slug that is entered as the page slug to the page inside of our data that we're returning. So I'm gonna say the slug should be equal to page.slug. This is how we're going to actually build the URLs of static HTML into our directory but we also need data for each of these. So I'm going to create a props uh, property as well. And inside that, I'm going to return out the page uh, information that we got back out. So you'll remember we had the slug, the title, and the body with the HTML. So all that's going to go into the props, which are going to be what allow us to access that from our template down below. To get it into our template, we could just use astro.props or we could go ahead and destructure off of that in our front matter to make it easier on ourselves. So I'm gonna set up a const and we will destructure out a piece of that uh, full data. We just want the page that is going to come from the astro uh, object called props. So any page that is then built will have on it the page uh, data that we got from our API request. So now we have a page in our data, which is available in our template. So we're gonna use that to actually lay out our page here below. So we'll start very simply uh, with an H1 that's going to be our page.title. So we have an H1 and inside that in Astro, we're going to set up just single curly braces there to display our data. And then for the HTML coming from our rich text field, I'm gonna set this as a div. And I'm going to use the set functionality inside of Astro to set the HTML equal to page.body.html, which is all coming from that query up above. And then we close the div there. And then if we're feeling a little fancy, which I usually am, we want to actually use the layout component that we get for free from Astro. So then we need to import our layout component from the one directory up, which is going to be our layouts director directory called layout.astro. We're gonna bring that in and then we can wrap all of our content in that. So layout, layout I know takes a title as a property and we'll just pass the page.title in there as well. This will set the overarching browser page title to the correct title. We will wrap the, the HTML in that. Let's make this a little bit better. Let's indent some of our content, save that in. And now we should be able to go to slash whatever our route is. 
So uh, let's go ahead and list those out on the home page as well. So now that we've made our first request, we're actually gonna make a very, very similar request on the home page so that we can list things out. We will not, however, need to get static paths. So let's go to index.astro and in the same front matter, instead of wrapping this in a, an exported function, we can just set up a new uh, client here. So we'll import GraphQL client from GraphQL request. We're gonna grab that same endpoint. And here we don't actually need the body, we just need the slug and the title. And we will build out a list of pages from there. So again, we will run through the same process as before. We will make a pages uh, uh, variable. That pages variable will await. We are in a top level function here and it is an asynchronous function. So we can actually run an await. And then what we can do is we can actually use these pages inside of our um, inside of our template. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and destructure since I know there's actually a pages uh, property, uh, pages array on that response as we saw in the other page. So we come down here into our Astro template, we can actually loop through the pages. So we'll do a pages.map and we will take the page off of each of those and do a component return for each of them. So in this case, uh, we will probably put things inside of a, uh, a UL. So let's put everything inside of list items. So we'll have an anchor tag with an href that will go to the page.slug. And then we will have the page.title be the main text that's listed. And let's go ahead and wrap all of this in a standard HTML UL outside of that map. Let's save that in. And you can see we now have three uh, pages pulling in with their titles. And I can click on any of them and we will go to the page that pulls in the title. It has the page title in the HTML and it has the body as HTML. So each page is different. Each page sits at the slash and you could do this with blog posts uh, slash blogs route. You could do that this as um, individual items from a database, you could use this in any headless CMS, any API that you've got. All right, so in a few steps, we have things up and running with Astro. We are live with dynamic routes from this external database, in this case, HiGraph, but really any API, GraphQL, REST, it doesn't matter, you're good to go. I highly encourage you checking out Astro. It is a very powerful framework with lots of additional bells and whistles like Islands Architecture, which I'm a big fan of as well. But this will get you started with static pages built from a database in very few steps and just a little bit of code. So I hope you try it out today. And really, I hope you keep making amazing things on the web.